Thanks. Even in these days of lockdown, it's good that we can get together to worship. We are in the presence of God, so let us pause and gather strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. In the Methodist Prayer Handbook, I'm turning to page four. I'm sure you've all got one. And it's a nice prayer meditation from the Bronze Grove and Redditch circuit. Come and sit beside me while I pray, Lord. I need to feel as though you are close enough to hear. Lately you've seemed distant and far away from my life. But now I pause, and at last I realise that you have been there all the while. Throughout all my distractions, you have been with me, patiently waiting for my focus to return to you. You invite me to come and sit beside you, not because I am worthy, but because I am in need. Now I am still, and in the peace that enfolds me, I know that you are God. Amen. So we listen now to a more modern hymn, but a beautiful hymn, which is always in the nation's top favourite find. Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Heaven. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear.
Let us come to God in prayer. Eternal God, source of life and love, in the quiet of our individual homes, we worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us to feel united with our church family, united with a great company of heaven, and joined with your church family worldwide. Lord Jesus Christ, divine healer, lift us from the heaviness of lockdown, from our great fears of infection. Calm our minds, that we may be able to truly count our blessings. Holy Spirit, support and comfort us through these isolated days, that we may find ways to support and comfort those we love. So renew us in this time of worship, and build us up in faith, hope and love. Amen. We say together the prayer of all Christ's followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our lectionary readings take us through different portions of the Bible at different times. And at the moment, we're ploughing through the first chapter of John's Gospel. We've already had the calling of Andrew and Simon Peter, and now the story moves on for the calling of Philip and Nathanael. Our reading is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 50. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. Thanks be to God. I think if we remember how crowds flocked long distances to hear Dr. Billy Graham in his crusades, then we get a flavour of how people flocked to hear John the Baptist. The brothers Andrew and Simon Peter, along with Philip and Nathaniel, had gone a long way, perhaps 80 miles or more, to hear this great preacher. Andrew was so inspired, he became one of John the Baptist's disciples. But with John's implied endorsement, he then followed Jesus. 
And so we have this picture of men a long way from home, and there's Andrew and Simon Peter. They're following a new person. And we can imagine Philip hanging around. He'd been challenged, but he wasn't quite sure what to do. It was such a big step. Then along comes Jesus and says to Philip, follow me. What excitement, what an amazing moment. And off he goes to find the friend he possibly come to that area with from Galilee, his friend Nathaniel. Jesus had made such a difference to Philip. And so Nathaniel was out of the picture at that point. And I think we tend to underestimate Nathaniel as being rather a cynical grump. He heard all those rousing words from John the Baptist. He witnessed the crowds professing repentance, seen them baptized, but nothing had changed. The Roman army still occupied and oppressed his beloved land. And all those wonderful promises in scripture about a Messiah, none had appeared. His friends had gone after the stranger, and he, Nathaniel, faced a long walk home. To top it all, Philip had come along, prattling about a Messiah coming from Nazareth of all places. My first ministerial appointment was when I was stationed to the Campbell circuit in West Cornwall. Back then, the major preoccupation in Camborne was rugby, and their rival was Red Ruth, some four miles away in another circuit. Well, I have never seen such outright distrust, dislike, antagonism between two opposing sides. Two Cornish towns, but you were either for one or for the other. Now, Nathaniel had his hometown or village in Cana, some four miles from Nazareth. And I doubt if they played rugby, but they certainly had the same underlying antagonism as between Campbell and Red Ruth. Nazareth. Nathaniel didn't really want anything to do with Nazareth. Now let's face it. Don't we still jump to conclusions and we have our little pigeonholes for people when we hear a name or a place name? Human nature doesn't change. Philip persevered and he said to Nathaniel, oh, come and see. Nathaniel had nothing better to do so he went and followed Philip. Well, what changed Nathaniel from cynical grump to devoted disciple? Only one thing meeting Jesus. As Jesus came towards Nathanael, he realized that Jesus understood him. In Jesus, he saw that his hopes and dreams for freedom and peace and prosperity, for that's what was the biblical meaning of sitting under a vine or a fig tree, that longing for better times. Jesus saw, Jesus knew, knew Nathaniel better than he knew himself. Skepticism vanished and Nathaniel became a disciple. Now most biblical scholars agree that Nathaniel, here in John's Gospel, 
uh, and at the end of the Gospel and Resurrection appearances, is the same person as the Bartholomew in the other Gospels and in Acts. For we think Bar meant son of, Bartholomew. And where you have a mention of Nathaniel, Philip is also mentioned very close behind. The calling of Philip and Nathaniel is a, is a heartwarming, it's a lovely story. But has it got anything to do with us? As we sit discouraged by the oppressive lockdown number three, skeptical of all the promises that we've been given, hoping and dreaming to get out for freedom, peace and prosperity for those better days ahead. Well, I'd like us to hear now some words from one of my favourite psalms, a psalm which was the scripture for Nathaniel, Philip, the other disciples, and more importantly, for Jesus our Lord. We hear those comforting words from Psalm 139. Our second reading is from Psalm 139, reading verses 1 to 12. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high, I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Thanks be to God. What an affirmation of faith. Wherever we are, whatever happens, God is with us. God knows and understands. And I believe Nathaniel found in Jesus that unconditional, renewing love and understanding. Following Jesus revived his sagging spirit and restored his faith. But he wasn't just a follower. After Jesus' death and resurrection, Nathaniel and Philip were both at Pentecost. And empowered by the Holy Spirit, they travelled far and wide to share their faith in Jesus, the Son of God. We know, as it says in Acts, that Philip evangelised in Samaria. But legend has it, Nathaniel travelled as far as Albania. Well, I know we can't even travel to church at the moment, but that good news is still the same. The good news that Nathaniel, Philip and the other disciples were bursting to share with others is ours. That wherever we are, whatever happens, God is with us. Jesus knows and understands and revives our sagging spirits. Amen. And so for a hymn of revival. 
that lovely hymn 391 in Singing the Faith. O oh, breath of life, come sweeping through us. Together in faith, let us pray. As Jesus looked over Jerusalem and wept, so he must weep over our world today. Lord, we too would weep over the world, for the hungry and dispossessed, the frightened and abused, victims of war, earthquake, fire and floods. We pray now for all who work for peace and reconciliation, for those working with humanitarian organisations, prepared to leave their own comforts to serve and help strangers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All our news seems full of anguish and tragedy. We pray for our country. Especially now we pray for all working within the health service, emergency services and social services. We give thanks for their devoted dedication, the kindness and selflessness shown by so many. We pray for all engaged in public services and give thanks for them, praying for their safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our communities, for those whose lives have been devastated by COVID-19 where financial pressures, strained relationships or bereavements have caused heartache and hopelessness. We pray for young people with disruption in schools, colleges and universities. 
We pray for our families, our friends and neighbours, and those who previously would have been part of our days. We pray for our minister, Reverend Pauline, and the church officers keeping us safe and connected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And so, in a short time of quiet, we would bring to God's love those we know who are struggling, struggling with health, infirmity, with worry about others. We pray for them as we quietly speak their name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers, spoken, read, or from the deep silence of our hearts. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come to our closing hymn, that Hymn of Great Faith, 455 in Singing the Faith. And hopefully we have the recording from a church in Bristol, a church which I was able to attend uh, in the distant past. What we need to focus upon. All my hope on God is found.
all too quickly it comes to an end. And now, may we know the blessing of the God of hope with us, each one, each day. And may the God of hope fill our lives with peace and joy and love as we go forward to an unknown tomorrow with our hand in the hand of the God who knows us. <laughs>